بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد. So today I wanted to talk about something very very important and that has to do with some issues of tahara because one of the conditions for our salat to be accepted is tahara, is purification, meaning that you have to clean yourself properly. And along with that, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Abi Huraira, oh, the hadith of, the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallam, la yakbal Allah salata ahadikum idha ahdatha hatta yatawaddaku. The Prophet ﷺ said, that Allah will not accept the prayer of any one of you until he makes until that person makes wudu. So that lets us know that if you break <coughs> if you break your wudu, that you must make wudu if you want your prayer to be accepted. You can't pray without wudu. You must pray with wudu. Wudu you know, washing yourself properly. Everyone understands wudu, washing out, washing the hands, which is sunnah, washing out the mouth and the nose, washing the face, washing uh, the hands to the arms, washing, wiping the head and the ears, and, the, and washing the feet. That all of that is what is known as wudu in, uh, as a sharia term, okay? So, you must do that if you want to pray. And, I, and we already know that. Unless you have no water, which is another issue. If you have no water, you can use dirt. You can use dust. It's called tayammu. And we'll talk about that another time, but I just wanted to talk today about some of the things that break your wudu and so forth. So here, this hadith lets us know that if we break our wudu, Allah will not accept your prayer. لا يقبل الله salati ahdikum. Allah will not accept the prayer of any one of you, or one of you, until they make wudu. If they if they broke their wudu, okay. So then that lets us leads us to think, well, what breaks our wudu? What are some of the things which uh, breaks our wudu? One of the things, uh, some of the things that break our wudu here. For one, that which comes out, khanij min sibilain, okay. That which comes out of the two private parts that breaks your wudu. Yes. So that which comes out of the bottom, akramakumullah, or which comes out of the front part, whether it's men or women, that breaks your wudu. Uh, and with that, so that we, we have to know, so it doesn't matter what comes out. It doesn't matter if it is, of course, urine. Urine, which means pee, okay? If it is uh, yes. defecation, poo, or poo poo, whatever you want to call it, or if it is gas, or that you yeah you pass gas from a So regardless of that, and in Arabic they say bowl, uh, wariq. Okay, if any of those comes out, that breaks your wudu. Also with that is other things like blood, too. So we, we do have to include blood. So anything that comes out, blood, uh, if you have, you're sick, some sickness and something comes out that's like, um, you know, pus, you know, if you're very sick, you have an infection, okay? Whatever comes out of those two, your private parts, that breaks your wudu. Or... Excuse me, or if it is one thing they call which is mini, a mini in Arabic, which is a Allah, this is what's called for men is called sperm, and for women I don't know what we call it, but it is when a when you become older, you become an adult, and you might get excited in your thought or you're married and you know you have relations and stuff. This is what comes out of a man, okay? And from this fluid is what makes babies. And likewise, the same with a woman. That also, if fluid comes out of her, 
okay? Because she's excited, because she's thinking, and she feels good about it, and it's fluid, then this also breaks the wudu. And there's a different, of the different types of wudu, uh, the different types of fluids, and we'll talk about that as briefly as we can. There's this, which is if, you know, really, a person is really feeling something, and then it comes out, and for a man or a boy, it will be very thick, and it comes out very quick. Uh, for a woman, also, maybe she will see something, see some moisture. This also breaks your wudu. This, if this happens to us, we have to make ghusl. We have to do ghusl. Because this is called, in English, we say ejaculation, a Um Or, if a person, they have relations between a husband and wife, this also, they have to make ghusl even if there's no fluid. Okay, just so you know, so you guys have background about this. And what is called, for example, there's also what's called midi. The Prophet ﷺ said, min al-midi al-wudu wa min al-mini al-ghusl. Okay, He said that from, uh, from what's called premature ejaculation, so this is also coming out, premature, this isn't exactly this, but this means it's light. It's not really, maybe the person was thinking a little bit, and it's before the sperm comes out. So it's just a little bit. We call this premature ejaculation in English. I spelt it wrong, but anyway. Uh, so if that comes out, a person has to make wudu. They have to clean themselves, clean the, the, the fluid, the karamakam Allah, and they have to make wudu. If it's full, like the full sperm or like this, then they have to make ghusl. Those things they have to make ghusl. Okay? Another thing that also happens to us as we get older is sometimes we're sleeping, we have no control, and water comes out, fluid, maybe a dream or something like this, usually when we're older, uh, and, and, and you know, in our teens and stuff like this. When this happens, this is called a wet dream. We call this a wet dream, and in Arabic it's called wedi, or, or wedi, or something like this. And this is, uh, this wet dream also, makes it so you have to make wudu. You clean and you uh, you make wudu. But for the ejaculation, you make ghusl. Okay? Now, that's one of the things that breaks our wudu. Another thing is losing your mind or intellect. Meaning if a person, they go crazy or they are knocked out in a fight or something, bam, he's knocked out, that breaks your wudu. When you're totally not out, out of consciousness, that breaks your wudu. Also, if you sleep heavily, if you sleep, and, and the scholars, they somewhat differ over what is light sleeping, but if you're sleeping, and for example, you're sleeping, and you have a pen in your hand, and it falls, and you wake up then in this situation, you're still kind of conscious, then that doesn't break your wudu. But if you're asleep to where you would drop something, and you feel that, you, you drop something and you, you're still sleeping, then that sleep, that deep sleep, breaks your wudu. So that also, that's something that breaks your wudu. <clears throat> Another thing, alhamdulillah, is touching your private parts. That also, that breaks your wudu. If you touch your private parts, after you make wudu, even some scholars, they say if it's by accident, but Allah knows best, but some they say with shahwa, meaning that you have a type of desire or something. If you do that, that breaks your wudu. So it's better to be safe that even if you touch it by accident, you make a new wudu. Then you're safe. We call that the ahwat. We call it the most safe. Touching the private parts. So that breaks our wudu. Leaving Islam, if someone says, I'm not a Muslim anymore, or whatever, whatever reason they leave Islam, they're not a Muslim, that breaks your wudu. And then they become Muslim again. They take their shahada, their wudu, even if it was in a 10-minute period. If they disbelieved, that breaks your wudu. Apostasy breaks your wudu. Another thing, eating camel meat. Not drinking the camel milk. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, mentioned in a hadith 
he was asked about uh, about the the ibl or the the lahum al the meat of the camel, and he وسلم, said, uh, from it you make ghusl, I mean you make wudu, sorry, you make wudu. And then they said, uh, what about the meat of, uh, of sheep, or a ghanam, or a goat? He said, that what means taf'al mashit, or inshit. Sallallahu alayhi wa Kama qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you want, you can make it from sheep or ghanam, but you don't have to. So it lets us know, and the scholars, they do have some differences on this, but to be safe, because there is a text from the hadith saying eating camel meat breaks your wudu. Okay? Uh, a thing we also mentioned that uh, making ghusl, uh, the reason we have to make ghusl, so if we have ejaculation on many, meaning that it's full, Akramakum Allah, the full thing that a person was excited, maybe they saw something, maybe they were thinking about something and it came out or they touched themselves or whatever and they felt really excited by that and it came out, then this they should make ghusl. If it was the stuff that's right before that, which is hard to distinguish, for a man it's easier to tell, a woman I don't know. But a man, he can tell if it's premature ejaculation where he just needs to clean himself with a little water, clean it off, and then, uh, and then make, uh, 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 make wudu. But if it's ejaculation, he has to make ghusl. If he has relations with his wife, he has to make uh, ghusl, even if nothing comes out. Uh, another thing, if someone, uh, something I just want to point out is about the issue about <coughs> this also breaks your wudu and you can't pray is if a person akramakum Allah they make istimna <laughs> istim na istimna means in English we say master patient okay which means in Arabic it literally means to pull out water from yourself to seek to get to, to pull out water which means that a person, maybe they get excited, they're watching things, they're looking at things, so then they touch themselves and they get excited, they make themselves have ejaculation, midni, or al-midhi, okay? So if someone does this and they fully ejaculate the mini, al-midhi, then they must make ghusl. If they do it, and it, it doesn't come out, but or just a little bit of water, a little bit comes out, then they have to make wudu. They have to clean themselves and make wudu. Kuntu midha and kamaqada in the hadith of, uh, uh, I think it's the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib, one of the Sahaba, it was Abu Huraira. Then he was on the, the Prophet Sallallahu didn't see him for the, for the day. And Abu Huraira, you know, was missed by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, uh, Abu Huraira came later, and he said, Ya, Aina kunta ya Abu Huraira. Where were you, Abu Huraira? Radiallahu ta'ala. Abu Huraira said, Kuntu midha'in, fastahyaytu an, an ujalis ma'ak, wa kama qala uh, Abu Huraira. He said, I was, I had midhi. I, or I was a person who had a lot of midhi, meaning, Abu Huraira used to, radiallahu ta'ala, he used to, uh, be a person who would have a lot of uh, this midi. Okay? Not all the way, but some of it. Maybe excited, whatever the reason. Or it could have been from an uh, illness. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But he said, Kuntu midain. And the scholars, they explained that that means he, had, he would, uh, had, you know, it was a lot. It was often. And so he said, And so I was shy to sit with the Prophet until I made ghusl. And the Prophet said, uh, in the end of the hadith, he said uh, that he, he made the hukum, or made clear the hukum of that you need to, uh, that uh, you should make the wash yourself and make wudu 
if it is midi. Uh, another last thing I want to mention is so this masturbation, the hukum with this, is it's haram. You know, you can't do that in Islam. We can't do that. So we should not, uh, we should be careful of the things that we do and touching ourselves and we get, you know, we get older, we get curious. We have to be careful of these things because it's haram if you do that. So you want to uh, be aware of this because if you, if it does happen to you, then you uh, make ghusl if something comes out. And, akramakum Allah, you seek istighfar from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, istighfar, istighfar Allah, istighfar Allah, istighfar Allah. And, uh, and, and do it like that. And so that's what, uh, those are just some of the things pertaining to wudu and tahara that I wanted to mention. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.